So this is Kerno. He's a great story. It'll be a better story if he kicks the first goal of the year for Carlton. He has. What a start. Ed Kerno playing his first game of footy. The man who wouldn't take no for an answer. Started with a crack at the Adelaide Crows. Couldn't make it there. And now he's kicked his first goal in his first game of the big time football. First one way, then the other, then tried to go back the other way. Eventually gets it away. The snap a shot at goal by Charlie Kerno. Yeah. He gets the goal. Welcome to the big time. He's going to be a really good pickup. His numbers in the juniors uh, suggest that he's going to be a high quality player for a long time. Daisy Thomas got a couple of sons to beat. Charlie Kerno comfortably to brother Ed. How about that? Brother to brother to goal. Great embrace. Probably one of your dreams is to, be, to play with your brother. It'd be a pretty special feeling, wouldn't it? It'd be a proud moment for mum and dad watching the two brothers. And look at that, that's a family photo to cherish. Uh, so we're driving down to Point Addis now, which is basically a spot I've loved to surf for 10, 15 years now. We have a, a day off midweek and I love to get out of the city and get straight down the surf coast as soon as possible. If I can free up some time on the, on the day off, it's only about an hour and a half uh, from Richmond where we live and you're back home on the surf coast and, and able to look for a, for a surf and really, uh, really reset before you uh, go again on the weekend. Getting pretty excited, there's a few cars in my normal spot where you get down the mudslide for a surf. I reckon we're going to be on for waves. <sighs> Looks good. Oh. It's pretty bloody cold right now, so as you can tell, it's pretty good for your body. Um, as you do ice baths and stuff at the club, it's pretty. It's a pretty big ice bath, as you can see. <laughs> um, so. No, nah, it's, it's awesome for your body. And when you're surfing, you wear wetsuit material, which is kind of like compression, which is also good. So then you get a bit of moving around in the ocean, get the body going. After a game, it pretty, feels pretty nice. Dad got us out here pretty young. We've got a lot to owe to him. He got us out straight away when we were first thing when we could. Um, and then it kind of just took off from there. Everyone just kind of got into it. It's definitely one of the best mental and physical ways to recover. Is, it was beautiful. It's pretty. It's, I mean, it's different to this coastline. I mean, it's different to towns here. Yeah. It's old. You know, it's old. There's stone walls everywhere and little cottages and villages. And There's a sense of peace and, and wild. <laughs> it's King Arthur country. It's really too. wild. Oh, is it? It's yeah. wild. Yeah. The biggest nightmare in Cornwall and the whole trip was, you know, where's Charlie? We always had to find him. Find him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember anything about it. You don't remember it? Oh, he's grumpy about that. He's really grumpy because he doesn't remember seeing. <laughs> Why did you take me to England when I was too young? <laughs> this would be interesting, like, to really re research the Kerno connection more in Cornwall because I remember going, I think it was in St Ives, tap serving me, got all excited. He said, Kerno, well, that's a famous name around here. Yeah. Instantly, that Kerno name was, like, kind of associated with Cornwall. Like yeah. steeped in some sort of historical tradition or yeah, your location. Not, and that would be good too for you guys yeah. to research that and learn about that more. Big thing in Cornwall was to mine and go down mines, which I'm very fearful of going into. Oh, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they either mined or farmed and it's all throughout these books. And this lady who I know, Edith Janet Woolhouse, is, who was a Kerno, she just studies the family history. So it's good just to be able to trace that straight line from the gold fields. I think, yeah, for us to take Emily and Will yeah. and then to go back to the same spots and then yeah. talk to Kernos. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What me and Charlie want to do as well is we want to bring along you guys. So um, I'm hoping Aww. it works, but 
we want you to come on a trip with us. So that's the plan, is all of us. Oh wow. It would be great fun. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go with that, yeah. <laughs> so we're all going. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, we're pretty excited about it. Me and Charlie have spoken about it a bit. I so love to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Janet Woolhouse's home. Uh, she's our distant Cornish relative. Yeah, so look forward to getting inside and meeting her and uh, hopefully learning a little bit about the Cornish background that we don't really know much about. So, let's do it. <laughs> So, Janet, could you explain to us about how the Kernos got to be in Australia? James was in Cornwall and his father had died when he was quite young and uh, he gets to be the age of 21 yep. and he decides the goals are out here and Goldfields is making money, what's better to come out to Australia and make your money? When was that? What year? 1860s, I think. Wow. Were any of them successful during the gold rush? The Kernos, Not from what you've read? Of. No. No, certainly we didn't didn't, go too well, certainly you never came down to us, did no, you? No, we missed out, I think, Janet. Um, this is our mutual connection here. Uh, James and Mary. James has a son, Percy. And, and, and that's where Kevin comes in with Faye. Who's our grandfather. That's right. And yeah. uh, Nana. And you've got sure. Roger and David, and then you come down to the next generation there. Which is us. <laughs> that's the same. So Janet, we're just um, wondering what um, James and Mary's lives might, might have been like in um, Cornwall. I think in those days in Cornwall, that was not a very good lifestyle from what we would consider today because he yep. was a market gardener and he used to take the crop from the farmers. Mary's life over on the other side of here, her grandfather presumably thought he was very important, he owned land and what have you, and he had a contacts in a gold mine. But yeah. unfortunately, as one of these people that liked to spend their money, he had a silver whip for riding to the horses. And when he died, all, everything was uh, mortgaged. And so his son, unfortunately, has to go into St. Just, work in, in the mine. So he wasn't very smart with his money. He wasn't. And so Mary's brought up with not much. Just want to say thanks a lot for giving your time to me and Charlie today. I've loved hearing about our history. And we're really looking forward to going over to Cornwall and visiting a couple of the places the Kernos are from. I can talk Kernos forever and ever and uh, I'm proud of the Kernos. I hope you enjoy your trip and I look forward to hearing about it when you get back. Mum and Dad, they brought us uh, five kids out to, to England in 2000 for one year uh, and we, we visited uh, Cornwall. It's really special to be able to now bring back my wife Emily and, and son Will with Mum and Dad and, and my brother Charlie. We're here today in St Ives, pretty nice place. It's like a coastal town, pretty similar to where we're from back in Torquay. Um, so it's nice to know we've kind of come from somewhere that's um, pretty similar. Mum and we all love the ocean and, and getting in it and surfing and doing all those activities in the water. So it was pretty nice to know that we've, we've actually originated from a place where obviously that was a pretty big part of people's lives here. We got to go check out a church that was built back in the 1100s. They had a registry with um, people passing away and, and the births. It was pretty interesting to look up a few, few Kerno names along there that they were spelt very differently. James Kerno, one of our past relatives, he was uh, baptised there, so we got to check out that. It was pretty cool to really piece together a bit of our family history and actually find something that's visible and, um, and there that we actually got to recognise. This uh, copy here goes back from 1598, I think. 
And um, and they got the births, marriage and deaths in here. We'll see if there's any kernels in here. Uh, Kerno. Is there a kernel? There's a C-O-R-N-O-W. Oh no, there's the exact one, 24th. You're right. On page 24. C-U-R-N-O-W, there's one for us. 1661. So that's the, that's the proper spelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've spelled it right there, C-U-R-N-O-W. Yeah. All right for us. <laughs> <laughs> the most significant thing is this name, is the spelling is so different to the lineage. It could be a K-E-R-N-O-W that could have been, or with an O or an E. You look at anyone's family history out there, I guess we're fortunate that we can follow this line for generations. Myself, Ed and old boy here just rocked up in a, the uh, Cornwall Family History Society. Who's myself? So, <laughs> so we're going to hopefully go in and learn a bit about their family and where we uh, came from and how we uh, got out to Australia. Well, Kerno, of course, is a name that means Cornwall. Yeah. yeah. Um, sometimes you see it spelt with a K. Yeah, K-E-R-N-O-W. Right. And why is that? Has the name changed? or? Over time, um, as I was, you know, people were not very literate, so... Um, so it was a spelling error that turned it from it, Kerno to... Ab absolutely. Does the name itself, Kerno, is there a meaning to it or is there... It is what Cornwall is in Cornish. Yeah, so that's so pretty that's much it pretty as much a whole. It. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, y you yeah. might want to ask Jeanette, who's one of our volunteers yeah. over there, um, who's Cornish, she might know more. Jeanette. <laughs> Jeanette. <laughs> oh, g'day. How are you? How are you going? Nice to meet you. No, I was Charlie. Charlie. So your relatives, Jeanette, and cause, because you're Cornish, yeah. um, do you remember the, the word Kernow? What name? Kernow. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's a well-known so uh, Cornish, Cornish name. name. Yeah, so we're Kernos. Yeah, um, we're Kernos. So we're here finding out about our uh, family history. Yeah, there's yeah. a Cornish man called Howard Kernow. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's in Australia at the moment. I met, yeah. met Howard. Yeah. G'day, I'm David. Yeah. This, is the, this is another Jeanette. Yeah. Ed, how are you? It's Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. 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 His sister Florence, do you know Florence? No, I haven't met Florence. You haven't met Flo. You're very much like, like, like uh, Florence's son. She's got two sons. Yeah, right. Yeah. I reckon I saw one at St Ives yesterday. <laughs> good looking fellas, I'm assuming. <laughs> Okay. Thank uh, you, thanks, Janet. Cheers, Jeanette. Yeah, Janet. Yep. You must get confusing around the office. Yep. No, no. <laughs> so we have Jacob Kerno, who married Francis Roberts. We actually found his marriage in the local marriage register at Gilval. So it's here and he married her on the 10th of February, 1827. Summer wedding, back home. Summer wedding. And the interesting thing is, it looks as if they both signed the register, which means they could read and write. A lot of people at that time just made a cross. They put their... I knew us Kernos were advanced, yeah. So there you go. Very literate. There's a book here, which somebody's donated to us because this has all been donated. Yeah. And uh, this family's in Cuba. And I've, I've so they haven't only gone to Victoria, they've gone no, to Cuba as I've well. No, I've literally opened this up this morning. That looks like Fidel Castro. Cuba next year, hey? <laughs> Kerno family of Cuba. What are the wives like yeah. in Cuba? And they're talking to, they're talking to Fidel. Part two. <laughs> they're talking to Fidel Castro in Cuba. Oh, this, I think that's our cousin, Dad. <laughs> That's our cousin, no oh, doubt about it. I've, I've literally just opened these, oh, so yeah. making an interview to Fidel Castro. With yeah, the Kerno, with with the Kerno family.
This is cousin Sam and, and his girlfriend Penny. Hi. Hi Sam, I'm Dave mate. How you doing mate? Uh, hey Hi. Penny, how are you? They're your cousins. <laughs> now I've been up all night <laughs> making Cornish pasties for you. For the Cornish cousins. What do we say? One, two, three, bog in, don't we? Oh, look! I've seen it. Seen it. <laughs> These were made originally for the miners, of the Cornish miners, and the um, crimping around the edge, this fancy bit here, the miners used to hold the pasty because their hands were always dirty. How good are those? Yeah. They're unreal. Mm. These are the best. What is that, so it's got there. potato, onion, yeah, so like and turn it inside. So it's, double so it's like it's like a full meal yeah. in yeah. one. Cool. Mm. But it's yeah, pretty much like having a roast inside a pasty. That's right. <laughs> yeah, the classic story is um, we did, we had no idea Florence was here except um, Ed's pretty loud when he's talking, and we're <laughs> we're at the Cornish Family History Library, and uh, <laughs> she just overheard this Australian accent, and then she heard the name Kerno, and she'd been <laughs> getting our family history together for us as well, uh, and uh, yeah. of course, one thing, Jeanette. Yeah. There's no holding her back once she hears that. <laughs> the connection. And she got talking to you, David, didn't she? Yeah, she did. <laughs> that's just a goal. That's six points. Yeah. As if that was a bit of carry on after it. Charlie loves to celebrate. So it's one of the biggest games of the year. Like we have about, nine, I think it was 92,000 there. Yeah. So, 92,000, wow, that's a lot of people. But that's, that's a specky. Thank you very much. Where you jump on someone. <laughs> You can actually make contact with them. Yeah, it's okay. it's a physical sport. It's funny hearing like an Australian say "can I," like in a question. <laughs> I'd say it's a bit heavier than a rugby ball, wouldn't you? Yeah. And I haven't got quite as much grip as a rugby ball either. No, no. That, it's not the uh, what's the different material. It's yeah, like a, um, it's so actually it's a kangaroo skin. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, kangaroo skin. So it's is it? Yeah. yeah. Wow, didn't know kangaroos came in yellow. <laughs> it's a rare kangaroo. That's the rear yellow <laughs> kangaroo. <laughs> so you'd punt it like this, yeah, not side on. Can you rip ball if yeah, you're tackling? You take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. Because so that's, that's the danger of trying to handball afterwards, is it? Yeah, is it spills out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Florence, who is probably my fourth cousin by terminology, her whole concept was uh, to make you feel welcome, make us feel welcome, and bring as many as her family as she could, meeting. Ian today and his son Sam yesterday and then meeting the people that lived in the site. Uh, it's pretty much what travel's all been about, but uh, feeling welcome in Cornwall is uh, something. Well, Ed's a competitive animal, and as a as a child, he kind of led the pack in terms of all the activities they did around the farm and at home, and being, you know, the baby. Charlie would just do whatever they were doing physically. But Ed was a taskmaster, so you know, you couldn't be soft. You had to you had to get in and do it all, otherwise, you know, you'd get the wrath of Ed. Charlie was the youngest, and he was uh, a bit separated from the older four. He's, uh, he's done extremely well. He used to just follow us all around and be involved in our sport, basically. Once Charlie came along, it's, he just joined the teams that we were already involved in. He was that small, uh, you know, six-year-old playing in the back pocket in the under-12s football team that couldn't get a kick for three or four years. I'm probably not the younger kid in the family anymore that he once thought I was. And as we're growing up, no one wants to be the worst in the family. And I, Unfortunately, carried that for a while, being the youngest, and now I'm trying to take my claim back. You probably hate me saying this, but I've just started to catch him a little bit, but um, he's still a few seconds in front of me. I don't know, it keeps us pretty onto each other about training standards, and um, no one really wants to lose a second or drop back a bit, so it's always kind of full steam ahead. And Ed would come home and watch it, um, Charlie play school footy. Ed doesn't get excited about physical performance much, but he just gets so excited. Um, and he'd rush down to the goal goal end where Charlie was playing full forward and just get 
incredibly delighted and excited about Charlie's marking ability and what goals he was kicking and I thought, gee, if Ed's excited, the kid must be able to play. I know Ed doesn't exaggerate about ability, so terribly proud. He'd come back, oh, that was awesome. And he didn't seem to care. Um, he just ate all, a lot of food and went around, did what everyone else did and then somehow got good. <laughs> really good. Back in Melbourne, it was quite interesting. It rocked up Janet Woolhouse's place, and um, we learned a little about our family history on the White side of the family. So um, we learned about Mary White, her her family living in Cornwall here, and they were quite a big family of uh, they all were miners. So the brother and, and the dad um, were mining, and we actually went and checked out the uh, Levant mine yesterday, which was really cool. Saw some pretty rough conditions that they they lived in, and eventually because of that mining um, in Cornwall, they, they brought themselves back out to Australia to chase some dreams. But it was really cool to check out the Levant mine, which Mary White's dad would have worked in. So we're here today because our great, 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 great grandfather would have worked in the, in the mines um, yep. here in the 1800s. So yep. we're hoping you could tell us a little bit about what that work might have looked like for, for him. and. Um, yeah, basically what it was like working in the mines. Eventually it goes down to a total depth of 2,100 feet. Now that is all driven down manually with a pickaxe, hammer, chisel. They are assisted by a little stuff called black powder, gunpowder in other words, and then later they actually have dynamite. So all of this mine is driven by hand. Kernos that left Cornwall, they went to Ballarat. So, which is uh, kind of central Victoria for gold, gold mining. We're assuming from the history of you know, their skills and um, background being in tin and... and uh, yeah, well, they say the hard yeah, rock yeah. mining, wherever hard rock mining was done, these Cornish miners would go. Would have been a tough life, I would have thought, yeah. working hard on these mines and then yeah. trying to provide for his four kids, was it? Yeah, four kids and then of those four kids, one decided to uh, marry James Kerner. James Kerner and Mary went out to Australia. So they would have taken their skills, picked up yeah. their dad on the, or well, father-in-law on the mine here in Levant and uh, thought he could try his luck in Australia. Yeah, so they were really trying their hand at pot luck, trying to find a nugget. <laughs> like we used to at Sovereign Hill. <laughs> So we've done, just in this small area, a complete family history spanning at that time from roughly 1831 when we have the birth of Mary and then from that time from 1831 to 1864 when they travel out to Australia as a, as a married couple. So we reckon that Cranken is about sort of 230, 240 years old, something like that. But I guess back in, in the time when your family were here, which was what, mid, mid 1800s? Yeah, early 1800s to 1864, James and Mary, they went out to Australia in 1864. Right, okay. So I guess trying to put a picture, yeah, the, yeah. the windows would have been different, eh? <laughs> uh, this part has always been the main kind of dwelling house. And then downstairs, um, I mean, uh, I guess in, in, that, in those days, um, it was again another kind of agricultural store. Yeah. Yeah. They used to keep geese in there and they used to sort flowers. So I wonder if that's where relatives would have worked when they were here. Because they, they yeah. rented, or right. they, they worked here for the farm. I don't sure, think yeah. they definitely didn't yeah. own it. Oh, okay. They were on pittance, so I think, when they can't, they didn't get anything. Yeah. So that's why they went to Australia, so yeah. if they could win Tats Lotto. Oh wow, look at this fireplace. <laughs> I mean, once it really gets 
Cranking. <laughs> Cranked up at Cranking. Yeah. It keeps the stone warm. Then once the stone's warm, it just keeps going all day. So how long do you think it's been there, the fireplace? Well, it would have been built with the house. Yeah. So way back when the house was built. Yeah. So it would have been a fireplace. I'm sure our rallies would have been. Yeah, they would have been gathering. boiling up there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about the coffin hatch. So up here, right there. you yeah. see this this little kind of ridge here. Yeah. Um, those floorboards would lift out so they could get the coffin down through. Uh, Why has I got a coffin there? I well, I mean, if yeah, you, you, you weren't listening. Yeah, listen, listen. Yeah, so, yeah. If somebody died and then they had to get them out in a coffin, oh. the staircase is so narrow. <laughs> so that's why. It's <laughs> not really so oh, you yeah. could kind of throw them out the window. So they'd bring them down through, through the coffin hatch. Here. It's amazing. Obviously. I've never seen it used. Yeah, well. but um, <laughs> I guess it's there if, if it needed to. Has anyone done any research, you reckon, on the average height of people back 240 years ago? With the height of the door, eh, Charlie's struggling a bit. <laughs> when we were kids, there used to be a roof on here, and then the cows used to shelter in there during the during the winter. That would have been fun when you were kids. Yeah, yeah. With the cows hanging out That's there. It. Yeah, yeah, it's quite a low roof. They could yeah. get in there, but uh, you had to duck. <laughs> so this was the wash house, so they'd heat up uh, the water in there uh, remotely, you know, away from the house, and, yeah. and do the washing or whatever, and then hang it out for... Drying. Pretty solid, that would have been holding together back in the 1830s. It's a very old scantle roof, which is quite an old style roof. Sunshine. Yeah, we're walking around towards the barn alley. Grandma bought this place in the early 1950s, but her husband, my granddad, farmed down there, the dairy farm, for hundreds of years. Yeah. So our family goes way back. Yeah. Your family kind of aligns with our family then, yeah. most likely. Yeah, yeah. They would have crossed paths. Yeah, I reckon they would have, yeah. definitely, because, yeah, hundreds of years that we've lived, that all my family's lived there, and then obviously your family yeah. too, so. Cousins, though. Cousins. <laughs> High five, more cousins. <laughs> Our family has always had Cornish tea, but we've never known it's been no, called it's scone. No, it's scone. Scone. No, it's scone. Look at Ali for the demonstration of how to do it. Yeah, there's just cream, and then on the top is like the scalded skin. <laughs> that is a scone. <laughs> yeah, scone. Did, They're good. Thank you very much. Oh, that's beautiful. Thanks, Ali. <laughs> it's been fantastic to come here today to see the the abode of James and Mary Kuno, and just getting around. And we just thank you for your hospitality and uh, showing us around. Charlie, you can say the thanks, mate. Yeah, no, thank you very much, Leo, to come through your house. Um, it was pretty cool to see that what uh, James Kerno and what they got up to back in the day around here and how they would have the conditions of living. So, yeah, no, thanks, Leo, us come in. You're welcome. It's been, it's been, it's been great pleasure. having you. <laughs> It's pretty fortunate that we're in a position where we can bring mum and dad over and um, have a good time with them. And um, I guess it's just us giving back to them slowly that they've given us, me and Ed, so much over the years. And they've given everyone in the family um, so much of their time. It's um, probably about time we <laughs> give some of our time back to them. So yeah, mum and dad, we, uh, we owe them a lot. It's unbelievable to be in Cornwall, to be honest, given that dad brought us uh, five kids and, and mum out here 20 years ago and now here we are. Just the whole cycle of being able to revisit Cornwall has been extremely uh, enjoyable. We all came out in the year 2000 and that's when we started having a little, little bit more of a look at the Kurnay family history. Spent most of our time trying to get into family future rather than look at the family past. His name, Kerno, that's brought us to St Ives in Cornwall and, and on this trip to discover more about our family history and why the Kernos travelled to Australia and getting to go to the different villages and farms and the mines where we used to work and just have a true appreciation and understanding of our background and, and history. When I step out on the field and get to play AFL, it's, um, it's kind of uh, my, my family name and it's a part of theirs too, so representing us all. And it's good to see the excitement that it brings my, my siblings and, and mum and dad and uh, my cousins and other members of the family. The name holds credibility and it holds um, generations of love. It holds generations of care and concern. James and Mary 
Kuno, uh, thanks very much because it's been part of the journey that's brought us back here today. Right. Smart. All right. And Cornish relative in Australia yeah. to find out about our heritage. Yeah, that was my one. <laughs> no, <laughs> continue from there. I was trying to like. <laughs> um, their farming life on the on the Rankin farm and uh, no cranking. cranking. And it's just, just cranking. Cornwall Family History Society. I oh, know. I'll just here you go. Uh, Myself. Ed, shut up. Ah. <laughs> I'm not going to do it if you guys keep on wandering out. Yeah, well, we're here and... Oops. Yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, having a look at what uh, something that I would not have liked to do. <laughs> That's the worst. I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> we timed out here. Hold <laughs> up. Well <done. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yeah. <laughs>